Omorufa you say ni get balls. <laughs> if you not see argument with this guy, Rufa you say ni, get with the publicity secretary of the APC on top national TV. Omo you go no say Rufa you know they smile for anybody. The condition of the country, it is If you know, if you see somebody that is angry with the country, I'm always want the country to be better. As in, like, we can do better. If you see the way the person take the handle issues, we surround things, we don't suppose happen inside this country, you know, say, hey, this one, he, he gets, he get mind for the country. He just want the country to work. That is the kind of Rufai you say. Rufai open mouth, tell this man, say, oh, God, on a part, they smell. It they smell, eh? Who mess inside the party? It they smell with corruption. Corruption everywhere. Since when Ona come on board, it has been from one corruption scandal to the other. He start to delist all of them. He list this better, he do own. Call list the Minister of Interior. We a company go collect contracts from a uh, better he do company. That's the human, humanitarian uh, affairs company. Uh -huh. Because now as this scandal now we involve this minister. This better he do now we want thief money as he come up. Now this minister own interior minister he own come up. Say he will even collect contracts from this minister of humanitarian affairs and company collect contracts. The man come and say, Hey, I'm not a part of the company. You know, I resign since 2019, but he gets shares for the company. Rufa he dig up everything. Eh? He talk about um, the team plans. I bet make a no just spill the beans before you chop the moi moi. Eh? Sit down. The video is long, small. Watch them, digest them. Then come come and say, come tell me, say, Rufai, no get sense or he get sense. He engaged this guy who to pour your sleep. Which he won't defend. He will not feel defend anything. As the man they defend, he did knock him. He did knock <laughs> A lot of people say this is an indictment on your party that came in that said they were going to fight corruption. But your party and this government set up by your party, I mean, the government, you know, that came in through your party's platform, has become stinking with this excreta of corruption. A couple of days ago, it was Madame Sheho, Madame yeah, Sheho, my, you know, that said, based on confession, there were transfers made of over 40 billion at the time that your party is telling us to cut our codes. Mm -hmm. Secondly, now in the case of Better Edo, Thirdly, and see her in positions around another minister of the interior, which we call the star boy of your administration. But we are shell shocked at the fact that his company, where he's a shareholder, is collecting governmental contracts and the cabinets that he serves in. Your party smells. What do you say to that? Uh, thank you so much, Rafai. Yes, sir. No, the All Progressives Congress does not smell, and there's no stench. Because if you say that there is, then what you're saying really is that your expectation is that the human beings, Nigerians who populate the party, who are also members of you know, other parties, are people who will live without you know, fault, without their own you know, agency, human agency, without their own ability to think and act for themselves. You're expecting superhumans to be members of the APC and therefore people who are above who are infallible, who are above reproach, who will do no wrong that is not the standard of any democracy or any political party because people populate the parties just like your staff who, are, who work here they may be members of the APC or the PDP or Labour Party for, for the, or whatever party for that matter but the, the problem is not and the question is not whether people do wrong because when they want to do wrong they, by themselves, choose to do wrong or do things that appear to be wrong. There's no mechanism available for a party to, you know, modulate human conduct. You can set standards and actually set, you know, parameters for imposing consequences when those actions are taken. That is what this president has done. Now, if you're sitting here saying, the allegations, people are talking about this, and the party and the government is calm, doing nothing about it, then we can be having a conversation. But not whether people choose to do what they do, because that's beyond the control of the president. But the question here is, has the president responded as expected in a democracy? 
yes, he swiftly responded to the you know allegations or the appearance that something wrong was done. By the way, he responded also in the way that he was required to respond under the law. Because, you know, better and all of these people you just mentioned, none of them has passed through any kind of legal or judicial scrutiny to justify the conclusion that was the premise of your question. They have not. And you can tempt anyone just okay. to finish that thought. Okay, finish, uh, finish, finish your thought on that, you know, uh, yes, that report. Yes, absolutely. Just to finish that thought. You don't tempt anyone with guilt who has not passed through first an investigation mm -hmm. and prosecution mm -hmm. and actually, you know, an adjudication of guilt. Mm -hmm. You don't. Because see, that's why the Constitution presumes everyone to be innocent until proven guilty. That's the constitutional standard. Right. Now, the point I'm making here is that the president has done the right thing. He has suspended the minister in question and has you know, set up a panel to carry out a thorough investigation. Right. You know what, we must wait for that process to take its course and to reveal. And by the way, in the public space, I don't know where you get that you know, proof that monies were in fact paid out. What I know is that a memo was out and there are suggestions that you know, the, the minister, or rather, it, it, the, that the member disclosed that the minister requested payment into that account. Okay. Whether the money was in fact paid, okay. that is what the investigation is supposed to actually unearth. So, Mr. Morka, yes. uh, whether the money was paid, let me read something to you. The federal government financial regulations, personal money, 713, says personal money shall in no circumstances be paid into a government account, nor shall any public money be paid into private accounts. An officer who pays public money into a private account is deemed to have done so with fraudulent intention. Good. The office of the Attorney General said that this request was passed to them and they rebuffed it. The question I'm asking you in the first place is, why will a minister of a party like the APC that is ready to fight corruption, a minister that went through ministerial screening and also went through ministerial boot camp even signed such a paper in the first place and push such a request were there not other checks and balances in our ministry that could inform her about how this negates the public laws on ground secondly why will and this is why i tell you your party stinks why will a seven ministers company be listed because the seven minister, in case you don't know, came out on television to defend himself yesterday. That is no longer a director of the company, but he's a shareholder. Why will a seven minister that's serving a cabinet company be found to have his company that he's a shareholder to have done jobs for another ministry? Okay, so I, that's why I say with this, that's no, why I no, say no, your no, party let, let me, let Tell me, me your party. Let, 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 let me respond. Yes, you know, please leave this. Language of what stinks and what doesn't stink. I, I, you know, I don't want to get into that um, submoral conversation. I, I won't do that. But if I, like I said, the regulation you read out is a regulation of the Federal you know, Republic. The question you framed around that regulation is the question that this panel that the President has set up was in fact set up to answer. You know, did it happen? How did it happen? Why did it happen? If it did. The answers to those questions will determine what the panel recommends in terms of you know, action on the point, actionable points going forward on this matter. So the point I'm making is that <clears throat> I don't think it's okay because you don't have any facts on what, you know, the memo is there. I don't think anybody is disputing that. But why was the memo written was it appropriate? That is for you know the minister involved to explain to this panel to their satisfaction. But if they don't, then that's where issues of culpability will arise. But we're not there yet. Mr. Walker, you can't fast track that process because you know otherwise you simply slam everybody. I can point the finger at you and say you did something, and then we throw you in jail. Okay. It doesn't work like that All in right. a democracy. Mr. And as for please, there's a second part of the question, but I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. As for the uh, reference to Tunji and all that. I watched Tunji on the show. He explained that as of 2019, when he got elected to the House, he resigned as a director.
Now, Rufai, are you seriously saying that if people have investments in banks and in institutions, in businesses, as citizens who want to invest their money, that as soon as they get appointed to uh, become minister, they are supposed to have that company that they are shareholders, for example, completely quit any kind of transactions or beneficial transactions with, with the government? Look, you know, um, I, I stand to be educated. Could, if I, no, if this is what happens you, elsewhere, let me ask you, please, you know, discuss could, that. Could he have put those shares in a trust? Listen, mechanism, he, see, even if he, uh, he, Rufayo, please, wait. That's not the way it works. Mm. If the individual chooses to put his investment in a trust, in a trust for whose benefit? Mm. If ultimately it's for the benefit of his children or his family or his nominated beneficiary, he is still indirectly the beneficiary. So your point is completely not valid. He have got it's not a valid point you're making. If he was not serving in that cabinet. Look, other companies that got contracts, where do they have ministers serving in the cabinet? All right. yeah, that's, that's, All that's right. a self-defeating question Ten you're asking. All right. Because, you know, the, the let, let me come in there, here. Let me there was here. no... I mean, there were many companies, I'm sure, Mr. that Mark. also got contracts. Okay. Are they all, you know, with ministers in the cabinet? Okay. No, right. that's not the criteria. Okay. Let's not the criteria. Let's For centuries, the Ijele has been a revered masquerade in Igbo land, a predominant tribe in southern Nigeria. The Ijele is a grand spectacle that commands respect, awe, and celebration. Today, Innocent Vehicles brings you the Ijele in a new form. A majestic, robust, and monolithic pickup truck designed to leave an indelible mark in the annals of automotive history. The Innocent Ijele is equipped with a powerful 3.0L turbo engine and 4WD to conquer any terrain with ease. Make way for the Innocent Ijele, Innocent Vehicle, the pride of African roads.